How you guys doing? I'm Kent Tilly, and today I want to talk to you about uh, buying real estate with no money of your own. Because I've seen a whole bunch of people on TikTok talking about this, and uh, I think it's an absolutely terrible idea. So I want to talk about it, and uh, and by talking about it, uh, I'm actually just going to tell you guys a story, uh, and hopefully it gives you a little bit of a warning of you know what the hell can happen if you do this. Um, and don't get me wrong, there's you know. It is absolutely true that if you really, really want to make a lot of money and uh, and you don't have a huge income and a ton of excess capital to invest, then one way to do that is to leverage, which it's obviously very easy for people to understand the idea of leverage with real estate because they're like, you know, I know I can go out and get a mortgage because it's tied to this, you know, apartment or this house or whatever. And then I'm going to get cash flow through a renter. And then I'm going to be able to pay this with the renter's income and I'm going to build up equity. And eventually that's, and it's a very simple to understand that, you know, obviously this is a, a, a pretty generally most of the time safe way to make money and actually leverage. Uh, now, uh, and you can do that with, you know, investing in the stock market or another business or whatever and, and leveraging, I'm not against it at all, but I do want people to think about what can actually go wrong before they do a leverage and not just do it because you have this idea in your head that you're going to get rich really quick by doing it. Because what has been happening, obviously, especially in a couple markets in Canada, is that people are just getting like paper rich almost overnight because of their real estate. And that seems like this never ending cycle that you need to get in on because you've got your buddy over there that just bought a condo that was being built. And before he even moved in, it was worth $300,000 more. And he took out the equity and he bought a Range Rover and he's looking like he's just, you know, printing money and he's the greatest investor that ever lived. Now, something that you might not remember is is that uh, when I was in my 20s, Alberta was going through this identical thing. And every single one of my friends that had bought a condo or a house was seeing all of this. And some people over time actually really made this work out for them. But if you talk to most Albertans that got into the property market at that time, it did not work out very well for them because they took weird risks trying to make easy money really fast. And when you're thinking about a leverage, you cannot be thinking about it that I'm going to make this money in six months. I'm going to borrow this hundred grand when Bitcoin's low and I'm going to sell it at three times the price. That might happen. And if you do it, thank goodness. But what if it absolutely tanks? What if the stock market absolutely tanks? What if the real estate market in Canada absolutely tanks? And you have to think about that before you do it because it can happen. And if it does, then you will be screwed. So that's where I'm gonna get into this story. So at the time in my old career before I got into financial planning was I was something called a quantity surveyor, which meant that I would go out to buildings, construction sites, and we were basically like insurance for the bank. So they would say, okay, we're gonna lend this person X amount of money and they're gonna draw on their, on their loan every single month and I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna report back to the bank and say, guess what, this person has done this work that they say they've done. So one example I always give is like, if you're in a condo building or something, and it's really easy to see if the drywall is done. So you say, okay, you know, 50% of the drywall is complete, so we can release 50% of the drywall budget and on and on until the building's done. And you're trying to just make sure that they don't go over or whatever else. And basically the bank was just using us to, you know, they didn't know much about construction. So they said, you know, you guys hire them and do that. 
And this one guy that I will never forget for my entire life, he uh, is about my age now, uh, and he owned a fairly successful small business. I didn't look at like his financials. I wasn't the lender. I wasn't that guy. And at the time, everybody was making crazy money in construction and real estate in Alberta, in Edmonton. And so at the time, he said, I'm going to, you know, leverage my business and I'm going to build this 36 unit townhouse con condo with no money of my own. So what that means, and I saw a guy talking about this on TikTok, and this is why I was, you know, sort of thought about filming this video, is this guy says, okay, so you go out and you get this loan for like three months, and then you do that, then you start leasing out these, you know, whatever, and this guy in particular on TikTok was leasing out storage facilities, and then you get that cash flow, and then you go and refinance it with a different institution with a better rate, and then everything's gravy, and you've made this super easy money. And that sounds absolutely beautiful. It does. I mean, you're paying high interest for, you know, three or six months or whatever. And then all of a sudden you've made this crazy return on investment. That's fantastic. But what can happen is exactly what happened to this guy. So he borrowed three and a half million dollars at 18 percent. And that was going to get his condo complex started. And he was going to get to a position where then he was going to pre-sell all of these units, have enough cash flow, have enough cash in his bank to basically pay that off. And then we were working with the secondary lender that was like, okay, after that has happened, we're going to release the rest of the money so you can complete the project. However, shit hit the fan right at the time that this guy had basically tapped out that three and a half million dollar loan but he did not have a single pre-sale at that time because nobody was buying anymore because nobody had jobs the economy had tanked the great recession was starting even though it wasn't that bad in alberta it did really stress things for like you know six months to a year for sure everything stopped now, this guy couldn't pay his trades anymore. He was calling me every single day and being like, can I get my money, Kent? You know, we're doing work. And I would go out to the site and nobody would be working. Nothing would be done every single month. And I had calculated at the time, and this guy was paying over $50,000 in interest a month. A small business owner that probably made, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars a year taking this risk, absolutely no chance that he could afford to pay this. So I don't know what happened to him. Eventually, I assume somebody bought, you know, that asset for pennies on the dollar off of him just to get him out of hell that he was in. But I do remember that stress that he was going through. And I do remember thinking that that was just an unreasonable amount of risk to take. And that is not something that I want to see anybody do because, you know, there is a huge potential for a lot of bad things to happen right now. If you're looking, everything on paper to a lot of people is looking fantastic. However, everything underlying, I don't think has that same sort of rainbows and butterflies sort of feel to it. You know, people can't afford to live because of inflation. The stock market was flying up at levels that didn't make any sense. People can't actually even afford to live in Toronto or Vancouver anymore unless they actually owned previously, you know, or their parents are going to help them buy a place. But you imagine if you've got two professionals, like two teachers or, you know, a firefighter and a teacher or something like that, and they can't even afford to live in a home in your city, what is bound to happen at some point in time? Interest rates are going to keep going up. There's probably going to be food shortages because of the war in Ukraine and Russia. All of these things and, and you're taking on this undue risk because everybody's selling you the idea of getting rich quick. Never 
invest with the idea that you are going to get rich quick because you probably won't and it will probably backfire. And if you get it right, you are one of the lucky ones and I'm happy for you. I honest to God am. But when you are thinking about a leverage, you have to think about the worst case scenario. If I'm gonna buy an apartment and I want a renter to rent out the apartment, I have to say to myself, well, what happens if you know, I can't get a renter in there for like six months or a year. Am I going to be able to afford the payments? And if I can, then I can afford to take that risk. And, you know, it should be hopefully a good long-term investment because I have a long-term mindset in my head. But if I was like, you know, I'm going to buy this building and, you know, I'm going to take out a $3 million loan on this building, and, you know, I'm hoping that I'm going to lease it out to a company for X amount of time and I can't find a lease person to get in there. And then the market tanks and then I have to sell it for $2 million because I can't afford the payments. Well, you get the point because real estate is not a liquid asset. So you can't sell it the moment that you want to when things are bad. You can sell it the moment you want to when things are good which is why everybody's buying it right now. But eventually that needs to come back down to earth. So I just want you to avoid taking undue risks just because you see your buddy or whoever making this crazy fast money really quick because that's always sort of a recipe for disaster in uh, the fairly reasonable short term. Uh, try not to scare you too much, however, you know, I do think that at, at points, a smart leverage is a good idea if that's your style. If you have the risk tolerance for it, if you have the cash flow for it, go for it. I love it. I think it's absolutely awesome. However, just really think about it and think about the bad things and not just the good things. Because sometimes bad things happen in the market and you have to be able to ride out the storm. Otherwise, you're going to lose every single time. Okay, thanks.